Robert Mbui. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Being in leadership, I'll give you five minutes. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Mr. Speaker, I've noticed, uh, listening to the arguments that have been passed here this afternoon, and also earlier in the morning, I've noticed that uh, it's getting a little personal, and I'm feeling a little jittery, because I know the subject uh, matter is a person who is a family man with a wife and children, and friends and relatives, and they're all listening. So I think maybe I will start reading the Bible so that we can bring down the temperatures. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32 says, Be kind, compassionate, and forgiving to each other in the same way God forgave you in Christ. Now, verse 31, Mr. Speaker says, Put aside all bitterness, losing your temper, anger, shouting, and slander, along with every other evil. Mr. Speaker, as a member of Azimio La Umoja One Kenya, I didn't believe in the leadership of Kenya Kwanzaa. I opposed it from the beginning. Mr. Speaker, I am vindicated now because I can tell the people of Kadiani that I said that this government is rudderless, is leaderless, is planless. And Mr. Speaker is also merciless because within a very short time, the center can no longer hold. Mr. Speaker, Senator, former Senator, now Governor James Orengo, famously said in Senate that governments eat their own people. Former leader of majority of the, of the National Assembly, Duale, was eaten by his government, today is a CS. Former deputy speaker of the Senate, Kidura Kindiki, was eaten by his government, now he's also a CS. Former chair of budget of this National Assembly was eaten by his government, today is a majority leader. I don't know. We are now eating Rigiji. Where will he end up? Mr. Speaker... I have an issue of concern, Mr. Speaker. Yes, uh, Majority Leader. Honorable <laughs> <laughs> Speaker, is a Deputy Leader of Minority to assert that I was eaten by my own government, Honorable Speaker. Well, as he knows, I was never eaten by any government. I only stood firm against tyranny. I stood firm against the bullying that I experienced under that regime. The same bullying I have stood firm against a deputy president today who has been bullying members of parliament. And I have only put my chest forward to defend the rights of all these members, including the Honorable Robert Bui, who was, who was Honorable Speaker when the deputy president visited Kathiani. He said to the Honorable Bui that these cambers are too few. They can never make a president. Kalonzo can never be anything. How can you defend a person who has disdain for Kalonzo Musioka, a former vice president of this country? Mbui. Robert Mbui. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Speaker. You know, I love the passion and, and the humor in the, in the majority leader. But, Mr. Speaker, I'm also impressed by the energy that I've seen in this house, the vigor, the passion from morning. I mean, it is a first bill or rather it's a first motion where this house has gone up to public participation in the constituencies. Mr. Speaker, I only wish that the energy that we are expending here to send a question to all Kenyans about one individual was being used to fight the issues that are failing us in our education, in our health sector. Uh, people here, the cost of living has gone too high. People have no jobs. Mr. Speaker, those are the things that this house should passionately deal with. But Mr. Speaker, for a whole day, and from, you know, I don't know even the last week or two weeks, to deal with that one matter. Mr. Speaker, I think that we are losing direction. And it is important, Mr. Speaker, that we deal with the things that are affecting our people. Because, Mr. Speaker, if you look at the education sector, I talked about it here the other day. We don't even have classes for grade 9 going into, into GSS. Mr. Speaker, the funding model for university has failed. Mr. Speaker, the insurance sector, NHIF, is having a problem, Mr. Speaker. How then... Do we spend taxpayers' money and time to come and deal with a matter of one single individual, Mr. Speaker? Now, we are told that this person, Mr. Speaker, is a tribalist. But, Mr. Speaker, those comments that he made, yesterday he made it very clear. And I was shocked. I was very shocked, Mr. Speaker, yesterday. To realize that, in fact, Kenya Kwanzaa was actually a company that is limited by shares and that people negotiated shares for themselves. The mover of the motion is a member of MCCP. MCCP
Shattered shares for Lower Eastern. Mr. Speaker, because we had two cabinet secretaries in this government. Now, Mr. Speaker, we only have one. And I'm telling you, Mr. Speaker, actions speak louder than words. The Deputy President may have said that he is a shareholder and there are issues about his community, but if you look at the appointments that are being made in Kenya, then you will realize that the person of the President himself is the one who is the biggest tribalist, Mr. Speaker, because he's appointing people from his own community for every provision. Mr. Speaker, if we have to find a situation where our school has failed, you do not fire the deputy principal. You get rid of the principal. Our problem is not the deputy. It is the head. Yes, himself. Farah. Thank you, Mr. Yes, Farah. Uh, Mr. Speaker, our Order. standing... Mr. Speaker, Order. Mr. Speaker, Robert Mbui, you are this, normally more decent than the, that. This is this is a house of oh, Mr. Speaker. Protect me, Mr. Speaker. My point of order is this: this is a house of rules. This is a law-making body. This is the place where our constitution itself was passed. You cannot bring, a, 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 you know, talk about a president or even any other head of state of a friendly country without bringing a substantive motion. So you cannot discuss the conduct of the president. And by the way, I want to correct you. You might 